Hi, welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man DT. What's this? Coffee. You don't supply none, so I have to get me on. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's that? McAfee. Yeah. McDonald's coffee is horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, it's coffee. The it's Costa, yours, Starbucks. You know? There ain't one near it. That coffee's rank, man. Yeah, right, it's, anyway, it's on the drive through It's it's literally as okay. I'm coming, coming through. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, you know what? I ain't been enjoying the international break. It's shit. <laughs> it's absolutely rubbish. Um, very cheekily, I want to, um, before we start, do a little plug, if right. I can, right? Go ahead. A year ago, um, my nephew was attacked um, whilst working as a prison guard. Mm-hmm. Um, and no, he wasn't the guard in my prison before any of you say it. Like, <laughs> We're being genuinely serious here. No, it, this is a serious thing. He was, he was attacked uh, by a load of inmates. I can't say too much because there's still the ongoing court case and everything involving them and everything. Um, he suffered um, horrific head injuries. Um, he got transferred immediately to the John Radcliffe in Oxford. Um, and they basically saved his life. Um, and they had to operate on him. He was in a coma, you know, the story yeah, yeah. and everything else. Um, he's out and he's, he's making a recovery. He's kind of, um, you know, still trying to deal with it mentally and physically. Um, but what I want to put out there is that he's um, joined up with um, a charity called Headway in Milton Keynes. Um, and it's for people that suffer from brain injuries and everything else. And he's doing a charity bike ride in June this year. And basically his route from the prison to the hospital and then back to the rehabilitation, he's doing that route. And mm. in total, it's about 107 miles. Mm. So he's doing that. Um, and obviously, I'm going to help him out as much as he can um, and spread the word for sponsorship and everything. So if everyone wants to, you know, go and check out his story and maybe even donate, even, you know, even if it's a pound. You know, there's going to be, you go onto my Twitter page, I've mentioned it on there, I'm going to pin a tweet on there. So if anyone wants to go mm. there and, you know, check it out, then please do so. Great cause, man. And well done to the hospital as well. These mm. hospital people, they do great jobs, man. And they're not on 50 grand a week or 100 grand a week. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, yeah, yeah. And they do amazing work. So that, that's, a, that's a great story. Um, but the international break is sort of <laughs> in full effect. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, the thing is about it is that it's been coupled with us not having no game last week as well. Yeah, because, uh, so it's extended. Leicester are in the, Leicester are in the, uh, in the FA Cups. So it's like two, almost in a way, like three weekends. Almost three weekends without a game. Yeah. It's just like, it has been. You know what the weirdest <laughs> thing is that we moan about Arsenal so much that when it's taken away, you're absolutely wounded because you've got nothing else to do. You know, I'm doing Q&A videos and whatnot because I'm trying to pass the time and just trying to... It's, you know, I've... Listen, last weekend, like, when we should have been playing Leicester, was like the start of the, you know, the break, so to speak. And it's... I'm at home and I'm having to put up furniture and do the family <laughs> stuff and... And I'm telling you, after a few hours, I'm throwing screwdrivers across the room. I'm ra oh, it was like if there was an IKEA fan TV, I would have been going nuts because them flat packs. IKEA fan TV. Charlie, the thing is, right? These flat packs, yeah. Trust me. Man. You spend so much money on these flat packs, right? And you think that, you know, the least they could do is put a half-decent instruction in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like... How many so times? I've done those things before, right? And then, like, I, I remember um, I bought a, um, a bed for my daughter. And it's one of these beds where, you know these beds where you lift it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you yeah. put everything underneath. Yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. All right, I This is... I'll never forget this, right? I nearly reached the end of it. And when I'm getting to the end of it now, I realise I put it round the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> and had to literally deconstruct nearly the. I, I, I tell you, I was gonna. Yeah. Uh, again, no, I, I that remember, screwdriver um, flying and that. I could relate to that because I was about. They're like to, on the. I was hydraulics. about to kill people. They're like on the hydraulics and you lift them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My oh. mum and dad had one. I used to oh, hide under man. it when the police knocked on the door. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be the hiding place. <laughs> and now I know as well now that they've got companies out there that will actually you can ring them up and they'll yeah. come and do it. Yeah, I was actually I, I, told that. Yeah, I, I said to myself, yeah, next time, man, trust me, I'm ringing them up, man. Yeah, I, I, I was actually quite surprised. I'm not. I heard that. 
I'm not, the thing is about it, right, is on, on DIY, I am pretty good at it, but um, I don't like it. I, no, I don't. I don't. Enjoy I'm, it. I'm quite hands on with it, but when I get to a point where I feel like I'm doing it wrong or something's mm. gone wrong, I'll get frustrated and, you know, yeah, all I need is you to turn up with a microphone. <laughs> you know, well, I like that IKEA fan you know I mean? We've got to get it rolling, man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a like, DT. Disappointing flat pack today. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> IKEA out. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's listen. But, it's you know what? Someone said something to me yesterday because they said that we must be one of the only nations that don't look forward to our international team playing. Because a lot of other countries, they look mm. forward to it. You know, you look at the Brazilians, for example, and how passionate they are. They love it. Um, other countries all around Europe, they're the same. But the moment England plays, oh. And the funny thing is, despite that, if you look at the attendances mm. for friendlies, England tops everybody. Mm. They've always got the, the most attendances for their friendlies. They've always got the most travelling fans for their friendlies. Mm. You know, so... But there is that thing with England that, you know, I think it's been because of all the years of failure. Mm. I mean, we moan about Arsenal and the apathy and stuff like that. But, you know, yeah. imagine England, nothing since, you know, we haven't won nothing since 1966. Mm. So I think it's with fans that are just like, oh, God. Man. I know. And, and, then, in, and then in recent times, like, you know, the friendlies. Yeah, and that, that, that's the problem as well with a lot of the friendlies is that so, when the players are not taking those friendlies seriously and you see them all dropping out, mm. then what's the point in taking it seriously? It's like, well, they can't be bothered, so why should I? I mm. get up for the tournaments and stuff like that, but the, you know, the friendlies, is, I just don't see the point. We're at a massive part of the season. It's friendlies, man. But then you've got the World Cup coming up, though. I'm going to win it. You've got the World Cup coming up, right? And these teams have got a... Yeah, but teams have got to prepare. You're going to have yeah, no chance we, of winning we, it if you don't have no friendlies. Ain't we finishing the season earlier this year? Yeah, we to are. To prepare for the World Cup. Yeah, that's true. But that's what I'm saying. I'd rather they did something else in, in this time that got people's attention. No, like what? What? Well, you know Crossbar what? Crossbar challenge? No, England. Well, well, do you know what, right? There, were, <laughs> there, was, there was one thing that I, I... It was Lukaku, actually, that suggested it um, the other month. He said that, why don't they have... Um, you know, like um, in basketball and stuff, you have an all-stars game. Yeah. Why don't they have like a North versus South? You know, so you pick... Europe versus uh, South America, maybe. Well, it could, you know, you, there's so many variables. But you mm. think of the Premier League, for example, and you pick the sides from the North, like your Liverpools, Manchester United, Manchester City, mm. and then from the South, you've got the likes of Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, etc. Mm. You pick a, mm. a set amount out of each team and go up against each other. I, okay. can, hear, I can hear it already. Oh, no. I ain't supporting. No, there's Spurs players in there. Yeah, right, I know. Uh, why, is, <laughs> why is there not more Arsenal players in that team? No, but that's why it Chelsea would be fans equal. Are in, why Chelsea ain't the, you see, it, that, That's why it would be equal. No, but you, you see, like, when they do it in America, I've been, like, I've been in America, I've been to NBA games and that, and they do a ballot. So you pick certain players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I just couldn't say it worked. Yeah, it they, couldn't they, work they, it. You know it what it could be? Or why don't it... Uh, uh, what we should do, yeah? We it should wouldn't do. work. Forget it. Forget we, it, We man. should do a, a, a club versus fans match. You know, you imagine Arsenal playing against, like, 15 or so Arsenal fans. Something like that in a friendly match. <laughs> yeah, hilarious, wouldn't it? I wonder who I'll take out first. <laughs> I'll be spoiled for choice, won't I? <laughs> I'll probably... <laughs> I, bet, I, I think they'd be taking you out before you got <laughs> to them, mate. Trust me. But, I don't, yeah, I don't think that will work, man. I can just imagine it now. Like, you know, Chelsea fans are, why is Hazard not starting in front of... Uh, we'd be like, why is Ozil not in? Yeah. Spurs fans would be like, why is Deli Ali? But, I mean, it would be chaos, But that's all mate. healthy. It, 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 it's all healthy. It's all healthy <laughs> discussion, but... Anything but these these friendlies, man. Oh, on on the friendly yeah. things, before I touch on England, did you see Alexis, right? Um, he mm. he was picked to play for Chile, and he said he couldn't play. And then he then ended up going, but he's the reason he gave was really interesting. He said that since his move to Manchester United, he's been going through a really rough time. He's found it really uh, hard to adapt. It's mm. become a real problem. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah. I'll tell you, it, was a, it was a surprising bit of a... I need to inject that into my veins. <laughs> this is amazing. This is a surprising bit of honesty from him. Yeah. I mean, it's not worked out for him since he's gone to Manchester United. No, As hasn't. a matter of fact, he's flopped so far. Yeah. He's only scored one goal, and that was a, a penalty which he missed, and he got the rebounding yeah. off. And he's just not... <laughs> And he was taking out their team in the last game in the FA Cup. Yeah, you and, can it, say and then there's, rested, a lots, there's lots of talk going around about a thing that I used to say to you and many other fans, and I used to get a lot of stick for it, there's going around big time in Manchester where they're saying he's not a team player. And mm. that's led to him not getting on with you know many of the other United players and that in the dressing room. Mm. At the moment, we're stressing. This is yeah. still early. They're, but they're, I remember I used to say this yeah. to fans, and fans would be like, who's the only one who cares? I Leave it. I honestly but, can't remember you ever saying no, that. You, 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 to, you can't really. You can always remember your stuff. Find me a video. Yeah, you like you say to me, your stuff. find me a video. Go I'll find you. Go, go find you me. can always remember your stuff. I can't stuff. remember nothing. But this is, what we, this is what's been you know, pointed at him for a long time. Great yeah. player but not a team player. And it looks like at the moment he's struggling at United. He's, well, he's admitted it. Yeah. This is... Funny. Should he have stayed? Is he regretting now leaving Arsenal uh, and going to Man Do you know what? I, I don't think he's the type of person that regrets things. I think that maybe he might have wished he'd done things a bit differently. Mm. Maybe he might wish that he, you know, stayed. Yeah, maybe. But I don't think he regrets leaving. Um... It's not working out for him it's, so far. It's not at the moment, but time will tell. Um, I think the bigger test will be next season. Yeah. Um, he gets a rest this summer, which is the first time yeah, that's true. since before he came to us. He never, be, he'd never, had a, he'd never yeah, yeah. had a rest. He'd had uh, two... World Confeder Cup, Copa two, Americas, it? Was it Copa, was it Copa America? He had yeah. two in a row because mm. they had a centenary one, didn't mm. they, when there's normally that's a break. Right, yeah. So he's never had a break while he was at Arsenal. So this will be the first time he actually yeah, gets a break. That's true. So, It'd be interesting to see how he goes next year. It'd be interesting to see, um, you know, will Mourinho see him as the focal point of the team and try and build around him in the summer? Or will Mourinho kind of just go, mm, you know, maybe it's not what I wanted. And, you know, I see him in a game the other week and he was playing left wing back. I know. And I said to you in a podcast, I and I was joking with you when I, and I said, yeah, if he wants to go to Man United, that's fine. He'd go there and play left wing back. And we're all laughing and joking. But look where he's playing. I don't remember that. I have to find that video. Yeah, well. find that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that, actually. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can't help but have a cheeky smile about right, it. Yeah. Because, you know, as much as I loved the guy when he was at Arsenal, and I'm not going to hide from that. I loved him and I loved what he did. And he gave us excitement that we hadn't had for a very, very long time. True. But I just weren't happy with the way he left. I weren't happy with why I feel he left to go to Manchester United. Um, for as million miles away we are from challenging at the top table, so I'm Man United. Mm. So I still don't buy into this theory of challenging for trophies. You know, he's gone to Manchester United and the only trophy he's challenging for is the one that he's won at Arsenal, which he said wasn't good enough, the FA Cup. <laughs> So how ironic would it be if he actually won that again this year? Mm. Be like, oh, you left Man United to win the same trophy that we won. Okay, great. <laughs> well done on that. But you know, and and the you, funny you, thing is, he was brought in to try and get him through exactly. the Champions League. And look at look yeah, at him in the and, Champions and League. They were awful. Look at the four games that Sevilla played before the Champions League. They were getting smacked four fives. Mourinho went out there with a defensive mindset from the beginning. In a way, you can understand away from home. You've got to make sure you're still in the tie. Just do something right. Try and nick that away goal. But, you know, that one, you can kind of... Un but at Old Trafford, mm. it's nil-nil. Oh. Why are you sitting back? Why, what, what have you spent all this money on attacking players for when you're just going to sit back? And they sat back and they got what they deserved. And the only time that Man United woke up in that game was when they went 2-0 down. And then they looked like they could actually open Sevilla up. But it was too little too late. You know, and I, I've spoken to various Man United fans. I've spoken to Flex over the last week or so. And he's saying that in the last game, um, the Brighton won. Brighton were well unlucky in that game. Mm. But Man United, he said that Mourinho had apparently been trying to get his players forward thinking in training that week. But it's like, why is it taking this long for him to realise? they still didn't look that. And they still didn't. 
great. You know, Maybe but can Mourinho, he, is can he change his of, mindset? Mourinho's turning a bit of a finger, really. Where well, can he change his mindset? Mm. If he's so, if he's so, we've always known Mourinho to be able to pull out them defensive masterclasses when you need them. You know, you remember when he was at Chelsea, um, and the whole Demba Bar, the mm. slip one, and everything. But how well did Chelsea defend that day? Mm. And they ended well, the up winning is, two 0 so Football's moved on, and football is moving so I'm on. Saying, and is, this is, is the thing with is Wenger. it the Wenger thing? Is it football's moving on past like you know guys like Wenger, past guys like Mourinho? Mm. You know they they had their they had their day, they had their plan, and they were brilliant and they executed but brilliantly. It's but now gone. it's gone, and now this it's Guardiola time. Now it's this like Guardiola, Klopp, these guys now with a with a different philosophy. A Different really mindset, attacking yeah. mindset. It's moved on yeah. again. Do you remember what I said to you in last week's podcast about how managers now seem to already be around for three, four years or so? Mm. Because things evolve. And this is why I said to you about well, the next manager. Well, to be fair, Marino has been around for a long time. No, no, he's been around for a long time. What I mean at a specific club. He's never mm. stayed around longer than four years or so. Yeah. But his philosophy has always been defensive, isn't it? Um, you know, it's always I been... Do you know what? When he was at Chelsea, that year they won the league, they absolutely scored goals for fun. Yeah, but I, so think, I think if I look at Mourinho's teams, his philosophy has always been they're hard to beat. Yeah, 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 of course. And then he's got lots of quality. So if he plays against a team that is not that great, he'll, he's got the quality to hammer them. If he plays against a team that's of a similar level, he just... Mm makes himself really hard to beat and either grinds out a draw or nick and, a win and then moves on and, uh, and this over the period of a season accumulates enough points to win the league mm. he doesn't do it in a very fashionable way but no. now that's changed now with Guardiola with Klopp with the emergence of even managers that you see even at the lesser clubs mm. their philosophies their, their teams are trying to be on the front foot and he's getting left behind a he, bit. he's starting to ramble mm. on yeah. A bit like Wenger as well. You know the amount of times you it's watch press, press conferences, conferences yeah. with Wenger and you're oh. going, what, what, what did nah, he just Wenger's say? Wenger's press conferences are more sensible than his ones. No, what? Jesus. You tell, what was the one about the trousers? Yeah, but that's all, listen, yes, yes, I agree with that one. That, you just look at it well, and you're you like, some of No, I know, conferences. but this is what I'm Jesus. saying. Jesus, you have been doing that for years. You, you're watching them now and you watched the one the other week that he had and he had a 12 minute rant about everything that was going on and about how he used to come to Manchester United as a rival manager and beat them. And, it, and I'm no, sitting there thinking, I'm sure Man United fans don't <laughs> give a fuck what you used to do. <laughs> they care about what's happening now. Not when you turned up with Porto and turned them over and run down the touchline. Changing times. And man. then look at the photo. People have been putting photo comparisons up of him in that interview to when he first joined Manchester United. It looks like he's been dragged through a hedge backwards. <laughs> it looks like the whole weight of the world's on his shoulders. It's a stressful job, man. It's it a is. stressful job. It you is. get a lot of money, but it's stressful. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you lost it. You can't even handle the abuse you get on Twitter. Yeah, Where are you, you going to go? But listen, if you, I'm getting paid 10 million pounds. <laughs> you manage your arse away. It, it, listen, 10, 10 million, million pounds. Pound. It's great. Of 10 million pounds. You know what I'll do? Deactivate Fantastic Twitter, at first. Deactivate Twitter. Deactivate Facebook. Deactivate no, but you Instagram. Can't. Yeah, I can. If you're, if you're the manager, you yeah, can't can. deactivate the criticism. No, deactivate it's, my Twitter accounts. No, forget that, that a minute. So it means I don't see them, ever. Yeah, but as a manager, you can't deactivate criticism. It's coming. 10 million pounds yeah, no, doesn't mean fine. nothing when you're getting that's fine. In, in, in 10 Let stick. someone bring a banner in the stadium. I'll punch them up. <laughs> 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 yeah, you last long. <laughs> Going back to the England thing, by the way. So, yeah. Jack Wilshire. In the England squad, we're all saying, yeah, brilliant. You know, um, it's fantastic that he's made his way. He's injured. No. Right, let's get this straight. Okay. He's in contention to play against Italy next week. All he's right. injured. Right. He turned up with um, a knock from the Milan game. They're friendlies. Gareth Southgate, fair play to him. He's not stupid. Mm. It's two games. They're both friendlies. They're not qualifiers or something where you go, we really need him. Let's look at it wisely. We've moaned at managers before when we've gone, why are you playing him? Why did you play him in that game? Why did you keep him on for 90 minutes? Why did you, you know, all of this? He's looked at it and gone, right, I'm going to look at X amount of players in the Holland game. We'll let Jack rest for a little bit longer just to get over his little knock. I don't want him to play at all. And then he can't, uh, well, no. But, <laughs> and then he, he We played, need him, man. He's even, a vital even, player from even, now till the end of Gareth the season. Southgate said yesterday in his thing, he said that um, he's in contention to play against Italy next week. Yeah. So I just think that they I'm are, worried, I think that they're cautious as well because of his injury record. 
And I would rather him be cautious than go, nah, 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 let's just play him. And then he breaks down. And then he is injured. I'm I'm a bit worried about this whole situation. The last thing we want is him going out against some Italian defenders, right? And one of them going in on him. Well, he went out out against them twice in a week. Yeah, but, you know, I'm a little worried about this. You know what I mean? A little injury. Stop worrying, man. Relax yourself. Be more relaxed and calm like me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Jack Walsh is a vital part mm. and we still ain't got his contract sorted by the way but he's a, he's a vital yeah. part and you've got vital remember, part who, of who's team. our next league game Stoke Stoke what are Stoke like doing yeah and Stoke are fighting for their lives fighting for their lives I hope they get relegated <laughs> honestly it would just be retribution wouldn't it for all of these that's what Tyson the other night yeah too right as well man that's the only time I will agree with him but it's yeah, definitely. I know we're going off point going into next week, but yeah, just mentioning them. Yeah, I'd love to see him relegated because of the whole... It's not so much the Ramsey thing and the Shawcross thing and everything. It's the fact that they got the cheek to boo Ramsey like he did something wrong. Hold on a minute. It's like, no, I'm not going to say what I want to say. I'll leave that for my own <laughs> channel. But... Um, We'll have a chat about them next yeah, week. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll about, about that. I'll go into more depth about Stoke City <laughs> next week. So, But just going back to the England thing, right? Mm-hmm. This whole thing is always an issue. Club v country. Arsenal versus England. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How, how do you feel about the old England thing? Like, the World Cup's coming up, mm-hmm. right? So at the end of the season, World Cup, big deal. Everybody will be tuned in. Everybody will be watching it. Um, hopefully, we'll have a couple of Arsenal. It just looks like Jack... Welbeck's back in the squad as well, which is, you know... I have no idea how. He's back in the squad. Remember, he'd done a great service for England before yeah. he got injured. So, I think that might be what's yeah, getting so him that. He's back in the squad. So we could have um, a couple of um, Arsenal players in that team, um, which would be great. Do you get behind England? Are you behind yeah, England to, we're in the to tournament win the, and I'll get you know, behind Because I know there's some fans out there that no, don't. I'll get behind the, the... At the end of the day, it's your country. You know, and I'm proud mm. to to be English so but so let's go straight into this question yeah so, but I'll, I'll answer it for you because I know what's coming if a Tottenham player scores I don't celebrate hold on wait <laughs> I, I, that's not even the question <laughs> we're gonna get we'll get to some of that as well right the World Cup right we haven't won it since 1966 mm-hmm. right um God comes down and says you're sleeping at night and God appears to you in a dream and it says to you, DT, I will grant you one wish. Where's that accent come from? Is that how God talks? <laughs> I don't know how God talks, right? <laughs> but, uh, but God talks. Haven't you ever seen the... God talks in a Jamaican accent. Haven't Yo, you ever seen the... Um, what are you saying? Ha- haven't you ever seen the, uh, the film, is it Bruce Almighty? And uh, Morgan Freeman's God. You need to do the Morgan Freeman no, voice. No, no, no. <laughs> D- God talks in a Jamaican accent and says, yo, DT, where are you? No, sorry. He comes <laughs> no, he says, DT, I'm going to grant you is a, you know, I know you love England. I know you love Arsenal, right? Mm-hmm. So next, these two things coming up, scenarios. You can either win the World Cup. England can win the World Cup. Mm-hmm. I'll even give it that Jack Wilshere scores the winning goal or Welbeck and England win the World Cup, or Arsenal win the league next season. Arsenal win the league. But you can only take one. Arsenal win the league. Arsenal win the league. All day. Ahead of England winning the World Cup. All day. I'll take Arsenal winning the Carabao Cup. (laughs) I thought you supported England. I support Arsenal more. They're my love. That's my you passion. take Arsenal winning the All Carabao day. Cup All day. ahead of England winning All the day. World Cup. The All World day. Cup. I put my life into Arsenal. The World Cup that we haven't won since 1966. I couldn't give a fuck. You, I thought you just said you supported England. But if I had to make a choice out of England or Arsenal, I know exactly who the I'm The Carabao choose. Cup. I can care this. I want a trophy. So I will support, <laughs> if I was given a choice, yeah. Jack Wilshire be, scoring the winning goal in the no, World Cup no, and winning the Carabao Cup. Arsenal, all day long. The Carabao Arsenal Cup. Arsenal comes before England all day long. I put my life into Arsenal. I dedicate everything to Arsenal. I go up and down the country watching that team. I spend absolute thousands upon thousands every season watching that team. Have done since the 86-87 season. Pass down to me through my family. Pass it down to my family, my kids. 
And you're asking me that question? Nah. No, I'm just saying, but Next. Cara Next. Yeah, the Carabo Cup. Read, read, read your sheet. <laughs> Next. The nah, Carabo Cup. Let's pull it to a poll. Uh, let's pull it to a poll for Arsenal fans. We'll put that to a poll. Who would, what would no, you but, rather? But not all Arsenal fans are going to be... So what we'll do is we'll... You know what? If, so again, this is very interesting. And in If you put it to Arsenal fans who support England... Yeah. Why don't you pull it to fans, hold, hold, hold fans on, hold in on, general? Hold on. If you put it to Arsenal fans who supported England... Mm-hmm. They a lot of them might agree with you. I don't know about on the Carabao Cup thing. Surely not. But um, we, we'll put it. If you're a, if you're an Arsenal fan and you support England, right? England, all right. I'm going to br break this into a couple. So England, would you rather win the Carabao Cup than winning the World Cup and Jack Wilshere scoring the winning goal? That's the first question. But then we also have to break it into because I think that other fans are more patriotic when it comes to their country. You know, so if you was a, a French Arsenal fan or a Welsh, just say you're yeah, a Welsh, some, some you're them, a Welsh some Arsenal of them fan. Are more. Would you rather Arsenal win the Premier League or Wales win the World Cup with Ramsey scoring the winning goal? I, I think it would change them. Yeah, we'll, and maybe with but, French but fans in the question. Well, it's a similar question. It's just different. Well, no, country. it's not a similar question. Because you've got to remember, you not, not all Arsenal fans yeah, are English. You asked supporting. the question to me. For me, and I'm English, you know, you can't say that you're not as patriotic because... Well, maybe you're not, because I reckon if you oh, ask... Because I didn't vote Brexit. <laughs> I'm not taking <laughs> 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 Brexit. How's Brexit coming into this? <laughs> I'm waiting for someone in the right, comments to start Brexit. saying it now. I'm asking a question. Now, I, I think this is... I think that there's other country, other fans of countries... Yes, there is. There is are more patriotic towards their countries when it comes to their football team. Yeah, 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 of course. Right? I'm not saying you're not patriotic, but when it comes to their football team, then we are. Yes. They're in the, in the, if you ask the Welsh fan that, I think nearly 90% of them would say, no, 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 I'd want Wales to but, win the World Cup. But what the question was, was me. Yeah, I know, but so I'm just saying, I'm giving you mine. Giving I'm not saying that, yeah, the other The Carabao fans, Cup, I mean, no, fans, come on. That was tongue-in-cheek, and I said that, you know. But at the end of the day, if you ask the genuine question... You know, God come down, like a blood clot, like what you said, Jamaican man and everything. God and he was switch. like, Champions League or the Premier League, right? The two biggest trophies, either one of those, or the World Cup for your country. With Jack Wilshere scoring the winning goal. It could be Danny Welbeck assisting Jack Wilshere. I couldn't care less. <laughs> yeah? I couldn't care, right? If I had that choice right now, I wouldn't even let him finish his sentence. Move yourself. Give me that trophy over there right now. Okay. Especially okay. the Champions League. If it was that, oh. You will be, will you be supporting England though in the world? Yeah, I'll be supporting England. You'll be right behind them. 100%. So when the Deli Alley picks up the ball and he scores, you, <laughs> Harry Kane bangs in the winner. A, You won't get excited. No. Danny Welbeck scores. <laughs> yes! Welbeck scores! I can't believe it! <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it's like... Come on, you've got to put your... Uh, do you know what? Last year... Like, you've got to put that aside the, for, the, um, for, the, for the country, was it? Was that's it? what I'm saying. Yeah, that's no, no, what, no, no, no. Because, where's no, where's listen, the patriot... That, that's what I'm saying. Patriotism. Patriotism. <laughs> <laughs> you can just about say because. Don't try that. Where is but, No, but listen, listen. Right, that's um, not patriotic, that, is it? That's like, not getting um, beyond your country. No, I get behind them. I get behind the team. I remember, like, was it the Euros? And it was like, yeah, I remember the, the whole Vardy thing when we obviously nicked the Irish um, Will Griggs on fire thing, didn't we, for Vardy's mm. on fire. And I was right on that. I loved it. And um, I even done a couple of videos at that time of um, where I was in, like, the bar that I was in and everything. And you get behind the Man United players, like, when, when England are playing? Yeah, I was behind Rooney. I was shouting out his name when he put balls in Singing top bins song, and stuff. Rooney, Rooney. Rooney. Yeah, you do that. It's your country, you get man. You'd be on Ashley Young if he's playing if in he's the playing. World Cup. If he's he playing. probably, I think he would. He's the best right. I, ju I, ju I, I, I just, I'm just very Will old. Will you get behind him? I'm just very, yeah, I'll get behind him. But what I'm saying is I'm just very old school Arsenal. So I will never sing a Tottenham player's name because I just ain't got it in me. But is this why... I'll cheer is and I'll be happy, why, but I ain't going to sing this their why, name. Is this the difference? That's what I'm saying. When you say that, you made the point yourself earlier. Is this the difference? Why, like a chili, everyone will just be like, all chili fans will just be behind chili. Mm. Don't care who plays for what. You've got that shirt on now. You're representing our country. We're behind you. Whereas in England now, 
you're going to be saying that about Tottenham players. Tottenham fans are going to be like, yeah, sorry, Wilshire, I'm not having him. I'm not getting yeah. behind him. Yeah. Man United fans are not going to get behind uh, Kyle Walker. Uh, but, and that's, it's all fractious. The yeah. only people that are really behind England properly are the guys that support teams in the divisions Lower that leagues. are not in the Premier League. Yeah. They're really behind it. They're really up for it. They're like England. And it, it, they don't care, right? But us fans that are in, the, especially the fans of the top Premier League teams, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool, there's a lot of Liverpool fans that don't even support England at all, right? A lot of these fans will be like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm mm. only interested. I mean, tell the truth, when you watch England play sometimes, right, are mm. you only interested when an Arsenal player's playing? Yeah, especially when it's a pointless, meanless, friendly, I watch Germany instead. Germany? Yeah, Ozil. My G. So this is what I'm saying. So if England are playing against Germany and there's no Arsenal players playing, right? Yeah. But Ozil's playing for Germany, what would you want the outcome to be? You'd want Germany to win? Draw. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You're, you're not supporting your country. Yeah, but no, I support like in the major tournaments. These friendlies and that, I can't be bothered with them, man. They're crap. So in a major tournament then? Yeah, in a major it's tournament, a then it's England it's all day long. Game. It's England, England against Germany, you know, anyone. I'm not anyone. convinced by you're saying. No, don't give me that. Don't <laughs> give don't, me that. If, he, if I was talking about Arsenal now, he'd, the look on his face and that, he'd be like, why you even ask me that? You did be like a, you know, a vigour to your argument. Whereas, he, I know you. I know you for too long now. <laughs> The way you're answering that, right? no, I know man. that's not the true I'm just, feeling. You know, at the end of the day, you'd I, want you'd want Germany to win. You'd no, I wouldn't Ozil want Germany to, to win. I would want Germany to lose, but Urs will get a couple of assists, so we still had a good game. <laughs> I don't believe you. We if beat France, him three-two, and he France scores one assist. England. One, yeah. France are playing England because Shelney comes up. Boom, bangs no, in. I don't the care, win. man. Don't bangs don't in the that. winner against I England. Don't care about that. No, if Henri was playing, oh, Henri. Different matter. Lacazette's playing for France. Oh. Scores scores a winning goal against England. What do you? You are you upset? No, I'll go and find all the people that criticised them. That's what I'm saying. You're not your country. Where's your patriotism, man? What's this country ever done for me? Well, you're living here. You got a roof yeah. over your heads. Yeah, because of my hard it. work. That's why I got that shit. Well, you know, because of nothing from the government. You're living comfortable in this country. Because, because of the government, in. you've got shit going to Russia in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm so glad I got my operation before then because I've got the best excuse why I'm not going. Everyone else has bottled it. Russia will be all right, man. Listen. Yeah? Listen. This is your country. You're supposed to be behind the country. When... When the World Cup comes along, you put all that to a side. I just side. said to you, all when, the, when your, the World Cup comes along. All yes. your allegiances to Arsenal are put to one side and you get behind England. The badge, the three lines, that's what you're supposed to be behind. Not, I secretly, if you're playing Germany, you know, oh, Ozil scores. And I don't really... And I don't who's play, who's I, in England's thing? No Wilshire. Welbeck's on the bench now, man. And the thing is, the England kit's crap. <laughs> I don't like it. I like the Nigeria kit. I'm going to get one of them. Kelechi's getting me it. I collect shirts in the World Cup. Not because all of a sudden I'm you're an not, adopted you're not Nigerian behind, or something you're not like behind that. England. No, I am behind England in the thing. And I'm I want not. them to win and I love it. But I'm saying that to me, it's, it doesn't even come in comparison to club football to me. It doesn't come close. But that's part of the problem. With, that's what I'm just saying. It's part of the problem because with the other countries... Once their country's playing, mm. German fans, they're 100%. They put all their allegiances, right. Bayern Munich, this, Yeah, that. that's great. They're all behind. Same with France. They're behind. They're not like, oh, he's not PSG players in there. Oh, there's no one from Lyon. I'm not supporting, you know. But in this country, we, uh, you know, I know it's because of the strength of the Premier League, but the top teams in the Premier League, they're not really behind. The fans, uh, you know, you speak to a lot of them sometimes. They don't seem to be behind the team. They bring all their allegiances to the table. Oh, I don't want to see Harry Kane score. I don't want to see Dele Alli have a good game. When they players get subbed off secretly, we're all going like, it's, yeah, I can get him off, you know what I mean? And, and you know, that's the problem. That's why we moan about friendlies. That's why you know we what? moan about but, all these things. But you know what as well, right? I'll give you a prime example, yeah? Your Twitter account, 
Yeah, for example, yeah. Mm. <laughs> when England are playing, right, and I have seen this, yeah, and it is a natural reaction, but say, for example, Deli Ali scored. Mm. It would be like, Deli Ali, get in England, something like that, yeah? The 10 minutes later, Oxley chamberlain who was playing for us at the time, score Welbeck. It would be, Welbeck, go! Yeah, like there's that extra excitement about yeah, you because he's no, no, listen, an no, Arsenal man. No, don't get me wrong. Obviously, I want the Arsenal players to do brilliantly for England. I want them, obviously, uh, you know, I do feel better about England when I see um, Arsenal players playing. But when the World Cup comes around, you just got to be behind the country. No? Yeah, I'm behind them, man. You ain't behind them, man. I'm going Russia, tell. man. I'm going, ru I'm going Russia in the summer, man. You, yeah, for the, for the trip. Are you going there to support the country? Yeah, Are you of going I am. there to be. I am. I'm going there to support the country, man. I'm English and I'm proud to be English. A lot of what I say is tongue in cheek, yeah. And it's. Yeah, right. And it's. Shut up, Robbie. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, when you're out there, you know, get your camera out there, do a little England fan TV, you know what I mean? And then go and find a, an English fan version of me or Claude or someone like that. But it's just. I, I'm honest in what I say. At the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat things. I'm not going to lie. Arsenal is my priority over England all day long. Mm. All right, let's take the, Arsenal, take the Arsenal comparison out of it right now. Mm -hmm. um, and let's just talk about England get to the World Cup final and Harry Kane or Eric Dyer or Deli Ali scores the winning goal for England. Would you be happy? Depends who they're playing. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, would you be I would. happy? Of course I would, would you we be won saying, the World Cup. Would you be saying to yourself, we won the World Cup, but bloody hell, I'm never going to hear the end of it now from these two. Well, do you know what, you, the, the euphoria of the moment, yeah, and I think you would be the same, and I think any other Arsenal fan would be the same, or even, you know, Liverpool, Man United, or whatever, um, is that the euphoria of the moment, you'd get lost in the moment, you'd be so happy, so elated, so like, yes, we can actually look on something within this country to be proud of now. All the shit that you see in the media, because of whether top. it's... No, because it would be a team thing. Yes, one of their players would have scored the winning goal, but at the end of the day, one man's not going to win you the World Cup. And then for... The next few, a bit like with West Ham, how they always say West Ham yeah, won the World Cup. But that's what I mean, and then, uh, that's up, what I'm saying. You, you, you'll be prepared to put up with that with uh, well, yeah, because, fans uh, saying... Because just like West Ham, it would be the only thing Tottenham have to cling on to because they don't have their own trophies. <laughs> <laughs> that's why West Ham cling on to it. It's their claim to fame because they ain't won nothing else. So if Tottenham do it, let them have their moment. Put it in the trophy cabinet with the rest of them. I mean, was you secretly happy? In the Euros, right, when Harry Kane had such an awful time of it. You remember he was taking free kicks? No, it orders. pissed me off. It pissed me off. It really pissed me off because I could see what was what was wrong. Every, anyone could. But for some reason, Roy Hodgson just persisted. You know, it's like Arsene Wenger persisting with certain players that are playing so poorly. You know, at the moment, why does he keep persisting with Alex Awobi when you know he's so off form? You know, little things like that. And I was watching that and I was like, what are you doing? Anyone can see that he should not be taking the free kicks and he should not be taking corners. But he just kept doing it. So it pissed me off. Mm. And, and the amount of times that Harry Kane stepped up to a free kick and I was thinking, come on, please just put one of these in the top bin, man. Surely it ain't going to be like it again. And you saw, you know, the free kick he had against Iceland after we were 2-1 down and he just... The way the guy had no confidence at all at mm. that time, and you could see it affected him. And then you've got a man there that's you know taking us to the Euros or whatever, and he's just completely inept. Um, do, 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 do you know what to ask you a question here? Just the Roy Hodgson thing. Do you think Wenger would make a good England manager if he left if he left uh, Arsenal at the end of the contract and they offered him the job? Do you think he'd make a good England manager? I'll drive him there. That's not what I asked you. <laughs> oh, my God. Would he make a good England manager? Do you... um, he'd be respected by all the England players. Yeah, he'd be respected. He'd, he'd improve the style of football. Have you seen our style of football right now? No, he'd improve the style of football at England. He'd have them going forward. He'd have them, yeah, he'd be have more... them attacking. Yeah. It might be a fresh challenge for him that's something Maybe. that he'd relish. Maybe. Um... 
obviously time will tell. And he's got a record, know. right, of winning trophies when it comes to tournament football. Mm. So maybe he would be the perfect candidate. You know, maybe we should just start a petition. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked you that question because that's not what I was Great asking. Great shout. You. <laughs> Great shout! <laughs> know what I mean, let's I get wasn't it going. Asking you that. But no, you, you know, at the end of the day, and I think that he would also probably bring some of the youngsters through. Mm. Um, not saying that Gareth Southgate isn't, um, but you know, it's. I think that in terms of England, we've got a very delicate few years because you look at our youngsters. They just won their own World Cup. Um, you look at all the other age categories, get into finals, semi-finals. We've got a serious amount of talent. And it's how they're managed. I think and where are they I done. Think be perfect for because them, yeah. it, we, we remember the golden generation mm. when you had Lampard, Gerrard, Scholes, Beckham, Ferdinand, Terry, Shearer. We had, on paper... Shearer? He wasn't in the golden generation. That he was, was he, around he was, then. Just he was, was he just that. before that? No, he, was, he was before who that. Was, he was who before was that. then? Who was up front then? Who was up front when they were not were playing? Was it in Owen? The... I can't remember. Who was Owen? Michael Owen. Shearer. Sh Shearer but just he, seems he, to have been around for a long time. Rooney, was, actually. Shearer Rooney. Was in the nineties. I know Rooney had just come on Rooney, to the scene. Yeah, Rooney. Yeah. Rooney was up. Um, Rooney was up front actually. Yeah. So you you think of all those type of players on paper, we could fit. You know, we could match anyone. We really could, you know. Should have. The one, we didn't. I, I, my memory, Flopped. yeah, my my memories growing up, um, my earliest memories of England growing up um, was Italia ninety mm -hmm. in the World Cup. I still remember David Platt scoring in the quarterfinals against Belgium mm -hmm. when the ball come over his head yeah, and he yeah. swivelled on the volley. And I remember going absolutely mental at home, um, and I was like eleven years old. Nothing to do with the fact that he and played he, for Arsenal. He didn't play for Arsenal he in 1990. He used to play for Arsenal, no. He didn't oh, come actually, for no, Arsenal until way, way, way he, off. Actually, yeah, Unless I had right. a premonition that he'd actually, one day be an Arsenal man. Actually, you're right. So, and I remember my dad going mad and he had a tray on him at the time with a cup of tea and, yeah. and stuff. And it, mm. it, we scored and that fucking went flying and everything else. And, and then, obviously, we then get to the semi-finals and <laughs> Germany. It was West Germany then. Mm. Um, and obviously, we lost on penalties. Stuart Pearce. Um, Chris Waddle. Hit so I've got massive memories of England uh, uh, growing up as a kid. And, you know, I used to love it when I was growing up because, you know, I felt there was something about the country and, y you know, that kind of thing. And obviously everyone, mm. this is... A, is this before you voted for Brexit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I don't get involved in politics. I don't get involved in no voting, no nothing, because as far as I'm concerned, they're all as corrupt as each other. Um, but, you know, prime example here, right? If you remember that in the semi-final, Gaza played for Spurs, mm. right? Yet as a nation, we all felt for him when he got his second yellow card and he's crying his eyes out. And Gary Lineker's calling over to Bobby Robson and saying, mm. you I'm might have to fair. take him off because he's, he's lost it. You know what I mean? That was a Tottenham man. You know, if that was now, mm. Deli Ali's just been banned from the final and he's crying, I'm pissing myself laughing. <laughs> I'm going on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you little mug. So what's been the change then? Because there just doesn't seem to be that connection with the players either and everything. And because of how, like what I said, that they just don't take it seriously. You've got players that just can't be bothered to play in certain matches. All these mysterious injuries come along. Mm. You know, players get caps now, like you go into the shop and get in a bag of sweets. Mm. You know, a cap used to mean something. It used to be the be-all and end-all. Now it seems like players that you don't even hear of. You don't, fuck's this guy? And he's getting a cap yeah, and it's, uh, you know, and they're just throwing them around like sweets. So the moment the organisation started not paying no attention and not really caring is the moment the fans stopped caring. I was young and, you know, I hadn't got to the age where you have your own thought process, your own mind and stuff like that. You see it as England and it's like, wow, yeah, OK. You know, and even going further from that and you think of Euro 96, 
right? And I was so involved in that, so involved. Mm. And it was like, you know, the whole, um, the whole song, Bedil and Scarby, Skinner, you know, you know that and the whole nation. Mm. And, you know, you think of the performance against Holland when we smashed them up, mm. um, you know, Scotland, Seaman saving a penalty, the dentist chair with Gaza. Um, and then you get to another semi-final and it's Germany again. And Gaza was that far away from tapping it in. And we were in the final because that was in his golden goal. Mm. So there was no carry on. It was done. Get to the penalties. Gareth Southgate. Oh, uh. sorry. It's my agent. Um, it's prison Gareth, guard. Yeah, prison guard. Sorry. Visiting time's <laughs> over. Um, you know, and it's, yeah, we just haven't seemed to have that luck. And then after that is where it really started to die out for me. And it's, you mm. know, as I got over 16 years old, 17, 18, 19, and you start to get your own thoughts in your mind and you start to look at what's going on. And like I said, caps are being handed out like smarties and players don't look like they can be bothered. And international friendly comes up and you're like, he won't play, he won't play, he won't play. And they've got a mysterious injury. But I think the excitement might start building now because I know one thing, all right, the friendlies and that, you are right. But once it starts to get to the World Cup... Yeah, that's what I'm people saying. People start to... Yeah, you like get me, that. I really get into it. I really get into it. Can I tell you World another Cup. thing? Can I tell you another thing, right? And this is not... It's football about the World Cup in England, but it's not football related as to the problem. One of the big problems, right, when I was growing up, and I remember this so well, was that... You used to see streets decorated with St. George's Cross, right, ready for the World Cup. Yeah, Brexit coming back now. No, that's the Union, <laughs> that's the Union Jack. That's the Union Jack. But yeah, you, yeah, you're right. But yeah, you, you see it, you like see bunting, bunting and, and, and flags and all this and that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Now... I remember one time, like, uh, you'd see loads, of, I think it was Euro 96, um, where loads of cars, they had the flags on. Yeah, the, and they go inside they the little window. Poles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they go Literally, in there. car after car had that. Everywhere. Was, um, and yeah. do you know why a lot of houses don't have them now? Because I've been actually a victim of this, and I know for a fact, right, because it um, happened many, many years ago now, that the local authorities come around and told you to take them down because it offends some people. Your flag? Your flag. And there's been a lot of cases... Yeah. Yeah, your flag offends certain people. You know. Mm. So I don't know who's complained, who's made a complaint or whatever. How big was your flag though? Huge. Bigger than the Venger <laughs> out one. But what yeah. did I do? And probably what did it have on it? No what, you. No, it was just a St. George's Cross. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. That's it. I, I, what did I, I don't what, agree what with did I go and do? I think that's disgraceful. What did I end up doing? Because I got told this because we were told, right, there was a letter that was put round in our close that I was in at the time. And, um, you know, they do all these, the older people, they do these committee things. You always go down mm. to the local town hall and you have a talk about everything. And this was one of the discussions and everything else. And it was, you know, there was a lot of people there going, no, oh, fuck this. I'm putting my fucking flag up. Uh, I'm going to put a bigger one up. And it's this and that. I ended up getting one that was like 12 foot, something like that. I had it you made. always had the banners of yeah, flags. But I had it draped off my roof. <laughs> Because I was like, let one of you motherfuckers try to take it down. You've got to climb on my roof to get it. Not happening. Not happening. And then I had the ones that were hanging out of the windows and yeah. everything I, else. Listen, uh, uh, listen, for me, there's nothing wrong with um, your flag no, being there. So. Not at all. I, and, I, I, and, I, and I love I do, all that. Actually, I do remember when, as I said, I remember when all the cars used to have the flags. Fly. I thought it was brilliant, actually. I love it because it, it's, it's like even going away from football as well, right? Because obviously where... I lived in Luton and everything. There's an area close to where we are called Berry Park. And it's quite notorious. It's pretty much the Asian community that lived there. Mm. And um, I was actually down there with a friend of mine um, when Pakistan had won the Cricket World Cup. Mm. And it's the same sort of thing with the, you know, the football thing. But obviously they're really mad for cricket. And like the whole entire place was just a sea of green mm. for like with the Pakistan flags, cars up and down, people hanging out sunroofs and this. I'm English. That didn't offend me. What I saw was mm. loads of people happy. Patriot, people that, you know, are Pakistani, mm. love their country, 
they're celebrating. I wonder if he's a Leave Pakistani, a Pakistani Arsenal fan, and it was a hurricane equivalent playing for Pakistan. He'd probably be like, no, <laughs> no. But well, the thing is, as well, I have also seen like because when when Pakistan play India, like oh, the yes. rivalry there, that's. That's like, you talk about Arsenal, Tottenham, yeah, but that's, that's another level. I but know then that, I the thing is as well, I've seen it in Berry Park as well, where, you know, on one side of the road, you have the Pakistani fans and on the other side, you have the Indian fans and it can get a little bit messy. Yeah, it's another level. You know, but at the end of the day, they're patriotic people mm. and they, they love their I country. Know, I mean, that flag thing, it, I don't agree. I mean, listen, let's have it right, though. There's some people who use that flag for... The wrong means, yes, you know what I mean, course, the, 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 you know, and that's probably the reason why I, I think that's I don't agree but with that. I, I think it's common I sense. Agree, I don't agree with that. I it think it's common, common sense. sense. There it's are like, some people who use who misuse the flag. Yeah, of course. If, if at the end of the day it's January and you're putting up the St. George's flag outside your house, you've got to ask why. Well, I think you should be able to put the flag no, up you whenever be, you want. But, but you know, what I'm like saying when you is, go to other countries, you know, yeah, the other day I was in the States, loads of people got oh, their flags flying. Just the other day in the States, you know, just jetted off over there on my plane and all that. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, when you go to America, lots of people just like in there, you know, just... Yeah, Americans are really patriotic. Their flags are flying. They're right? and, really you know, patriotic. And they're very patriotic out, patriotic out there. Yeah. Well, well, you know, you go to a game of... Uh, you go to any sporting event, big sporting event, they always play the national anthem. If you don't get up, yeah. people are looking at you and think, hey, what, yeah, up. And they've yeah. got their, you know, they've got their hand across there. They're very yeah, 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 patriotic massively. when it comes to their, you know. Massively. And I agree with that. Yeah, you should be. Yeah, you know I mean, and I and I think in this country they should be, you know, and you should be able to show your flag. But I can then kind of understand why that's misguided. But probably it's because some people use that flag in the wrong way. That's the problem. No, I, I understand that. At the end of the day, it's like with anything. It's like, you know, I'm putting a big one all the way across your roof. <laughs> what? C celebrating my country, man. You know mm. what I mean? I I, uh, yeah, no, it was it wasn't January. <laughs> know what I mean? In January. Talca, <laughs> shut up. See, don't make me start on him over there as well, right? Who are you supporting in the World Cup? <laughs> See, we'll have this debate again now, won't we? It'll be like, oh. is he going to be Austrian in the World Cup or is he going to be Zimbabwean? <laughs> you know, what, what's he going to choose for the World Cup? Listen, you don't want to fight. Austria, yeah? Who's going to win the World Cup? Germany. You reckon? I think they're so efficient. So efficient. They're like um, they're like the cars, Mercedes and stuff. They're just beautiful engineers. Nothing to do with Urzel playing for them. No, they're just a serious outfit. Yeah, they've got a good team. And they're right? Sane in there's, there. They've got, they've got good young players as well. Now. There's consistency. There's um, you know what? But they, it's not even just like the the the. Guys that we all know that play for Germany, they've got a lot of good young players now. Yes, Sane, serious Goretzka, players. People like this, they've got a good team, man. Like, yeah, you know. a real good team, and that, that's what I mean. I just think that they're a well-oiled machine. France have got a chance because their attack mm. is lethal. When you look at what can't get in their team, mm. that's where it kind of makes a mockery of England. When you look at, you know, some of the players that get in our squad, you look at other nations and go. They weren't even getting their team in a friendly. Spain? Um, I think that golden generation's kind of come to the end. I think with Spain, you know. The, they've got it, some good young players I know well. they've got some good young players, but, but I think it might through, take... It's come through like Isco, guys like I know, that, you know what I mean? But it still might take some time, and I don't think they'll ever reach the heights that they did when they won back-to-backs. Oh, well, you know what? No one's talking about Spain. I know, I no, they no, got, they're dangerous. They're dangerous. They've got a shout for it. You know, they're dangerous, but I just think that they may have gone past that you know France remember when France you know won the World Cup and the Euros and then they started mm. dying out and then they've had to you know it doesn't just happen overnight and it'll take a while same with mm. it's happened with Brazil I was saying, Brazil they got a shout for it Brazil and Argentina you get Neymar back Neymar's got to be fit <laughs> well, for them to have any chance well, the, thing is, the, the thing is with Brazil Neymar, and Willian, people the, like the thing is with Brazil and Argentina is that them countries pretty much relying on one person well, you say that. Willian's in the team. I know he's there, but, but who's, the, who's the man? Who's yeah, the he's one the that man. They, yeah, he's the man. That's the one. And, you know, I see um, a report because, um, isn't it Sam Sampali? I can't pronounce mm. it. He used to be the Chile manager. Yeah, yeah. It's the Argentina manager, isn't yeah. it? And he was saying that it doesn't look like there'll be a place in the World Cup for um, Incardi and um, Dybala. Mm. Really? <laughs> really? It's like, what? 
it, it, they'd walk into England's team, wouldn't they? It, do you know Icardi what I mean? and Dybala. That's what I'm Why trying to say. Why would Icardi walk into England's team? Because remember, you've got Harry naughty. Kane. Harry Kane's got a better goal scorer record than Icardi. So, at the end of the but, day, I mean, but he would be in the squad. Yeah, he, he wouldn't be left yeah. at home for a World Cup. No, Come yeah, on, well bit You know, I, wa- I watched. I watched. He'd be ahead of well bit, I watched him Cardi last week in his. Um, yeah, he scored four against Sampdoria. Player, yeah. Oh, and he just he just knows where to be. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's one of those. He knows. And where look, Guerrero can barely get in the team. That's what I'm they've saying. And that's, and why, they got, that's why I look... But then they always st- still don't seem to do it. They only no. just about scrape through to qualify as well, Brazil. And Argen- yeah. <laughs> Could England be a dark horse? No. No? I, I just think... You look at England, right? Well, We've no, got look, this talented players. I know there's talented team. players, but they just Harry never Kane's got seem the best, to show up. You know, he's, he's got just... one of the best goal-scoring records. Yeah, of course. He in, can score in goals. the world. He can score on his right? day. Um, you've got... Will the, he be fit? Huh? Will he be fit? I reckon so. I reckon he'll be fit. Probably it's better that he's got the injury now that he'll be fit for them. But you've mm-hmm. got, you know, there's Vardy, who mm-hmm. on his days are very dangerous, who rip Premier League teams apart. Mm-hmm. You know, there's... there's well, well bet. <laughs> <laughs> but you could have Welbeck on a wing, maybe. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of talent in that team. Aren't I know there's a lot of talent. I, I, just think Wilshire. That, I just think that when it comes to the latter stages and things really step up, that's where England get found out all the time. Mm. Um, and the lack of quality, especially in the midfield, that creativeness, that... Well, that's where Jack will come in, won't it? Yeah, that's where Jack will come in. But one man on his own can't do it because what is, what's he got around him? You know, you've got Deli Ali if he's playing to form. Then that's a well, threat. That's, a, that's already a good but, combination there. Well, then you've got Jordan Henderson and people like that. I'm sorry, but they're just not good enough. And neither's Jake Livermore. And that's not going to send shivers down my spine. If I'm a German or a Frenchman and I'm coming up against England, I'm going, Jake Livermore. <laughs> yeah, all right, mate. I'm not going to be in, you know. But if you go up against the Germans and you're looking at their team and you're going, oh, my God. They're literally every single position is like strong like ridiculously strong mm. their backup is ridiculous you know you look at our our 1 to 11 can beat anyone on their day Sterling as well don't forget with Ryan Sterling no, but, no, but, well, but this is what I'm saying scoring lots of goals Robbie, why can't England Robbie, have a how little... many times have we seen players playing so well for their club but the moment they come to England they're shit yeah true and this is the problem and that, that's until we rectify that and until we deal with mm. that then we're always going to have the same problem. England always cruise through the groups without fail. Mm. Get everyone's hopes up. It's like Arsenal. <laughs> Top at Christmas. Yeah, it's going to be our year. Then we fall apart. <laughs> it's a similar scenario. And it's the same thing with England. And we just yeah. always flatter to deceive. And of course, at the end the, of the day, that's, mm. that's the way it is. Of course, the final's going to be in Russia. Um, and you touched on it earlier about Russia. Mm. And uh, Arsenal, of course, in Russia, playing CSKA in Moscow. Tickets are out on Monday, so we are because there was a there was a bit of thought on it that Arsenal may not even take up their allocation for it because of all what's been going on. But Arsenal have. Yeah, can I just say um, one thing about that? Mm. I think it's an absolute disgrace by Arsenal not to compensate fans' visas. Now, I, this is another thing I was going to ask you about because I heard about uh, I heard that when Everton went there, Man United, when and Man United Liverpool. went there and Liverpool, they compensated the visas those clubs. Yeah, they're 108 pounds. What's going on? Like also, 108 pounds for a visa, and already it's a very expensive country to go to. Yeah, the flights are expensive. Um, it's probably the most expensive trip you're going to do in Europe. Oh, I don't um, know. Did you see my Belarus trip? <laughs> well, that's of your own making, <laughs> right? And you know. What he's saying is right. You know, what I mean, it, those ones were compensated, and you know, why are uh, Arsenal? We've got come on, not short of money, more money than you know. Ever and let, let's remember, it's their fault why we're going there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why can't you know? I, I think that's disgraceful as well, and I, I, I want to see some movement on this from Arsenal. You know, mm. what I mean, because you know, what, why what, not compensate the fans? Yeah, why not compensate? You know, it's it's hundred and eight pounds. It's a very difficult place. You know, there's a difficult place to go to with all that's gone on as well mm. right with you know the whole spy stuff and all that right yeah for a fan to still turn around and say I'm going despite of all the things that's gone on I'm going to support my team come on yeah. well, I help them out yeah no I, I totally I, agree I, I see I, it I, 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 I 100% had, um, agree with you on this I, I had a look at it this week and I looked at the um, process of the visa 
Um, and obviously you have to go to like, embassy a, an embassy and you have to actually submit your travel details like your flights and your hotel. Mm. So you've already got to book yep. these before you even get a visa. That's right, yeah. So you can say, I'm staying at this hotel, this is my check-in, this is my check-out, yep. blah, blah, blah. You then have to then go back within a six-day period or you can have it fast-tracked um, to then pick up. So you you know most flights are averaging around about the four hundred pound mark four yep. to five hundred pound. Um, so you so you think of that hotels is they're not cheap. They're not cheap either. So you're talking way over a hundred there mm. just for the one night. So you're talking over five hundred pound. Then you've got your match ticket. That's the only cheapest thing, which is mm. thirteen pounds. Thirteen fifty or something. Yeah, and then obviously you've got one hundred and eight. So you're talking around about the seven hundred mark just for a day. Mm. Come on, Arsenal. You know, there's diehard... The, the fans that are travelling for this are diehard guys that follow Arsenal everywhere. everywhere. People on. like Keith and that. Yeah. Everton compensated. Liverpool compensated. Man United compensated. Man United compensated. What the hell, Arsenal? What's going on? Exactly. And I you think know? they should. It's the least they can do. Yeah. You so know, and when, you look, when they look at it, right, they have to look at the numbers that we took to Belarus. Mm. Look at the numbers that we took to... Look at the we numbers play? we took the other day to Milan. Exactly. And remember, when going into that game, no one gave us a prayer. Yeah. We was on a real downer and still fans turned exactly. up in their thousands for look that game. Look how many of us turned up to... Uh, Serbia. Serbia, that one yep. as well, notorious and yeah. really bad. How many of us turned up to Germany yep. when we played Cologne? Yep. How many of us went to Sweden on How Ostersen? How many of always turn up? Exactly. Right, Ostersen's freezing, minus whatever, the fans still Not the easiest place to get to either. No, fans represented and I, I just, I don't get this. So maybe someone from Arsenal will put this right, hopefully, but certainly I want to We need to, to get the message to Mark. He's the one that you need to get to. Well, it's not just down to No, him, I know, but he's the one who could know. get it to the right people yeah. that can make the decision. Yeah, but th this know? is, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, and, you know, this uh, is this not on. If Arsenal, you know, want to show something to the fans, if, you know, the club talk about mm. divides, the club talk about, um, you know, the fractions between the fan base and everything else, do something that might put a little plaster over it. Do something that might make people just go... Mm. You know what? Respect. Fair play for that. Respect. You know, and, and yeah, respect at the end of the day. And that's what it is. If Arsenal turn around and say, look, there's, we've got a thousand tickets. I can imagine mm. there's probably only about four or five hundred going, to be quite honest. I think there'll be a lot of, uh, I think there'll be a lot of Arsenal fans from um, Eastern Europe. There'll be a lot of mm -hmm. Arsenal fans from... We've um, got to be careful as well, though. Russia and we, stuff We do like need to be careful because, you know, a lot of what I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of Spurs Russian fans are trying to get tickets for the Arsenal end. No, 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 I'm just saying. I'm just saying what, what's going on. You know, I've, I've had so many Russian people, so I did this video saying, is it safe to go to Russia? And I've had so many fans from Russia reach out to me and say, you know what? It is not as bad as what it's made out to be. Mm -hmm. It is just, you know, and you know what? I'm going and I'm going to myself to see what, what the place is like, because yeah, you know what? The thing that sometimes, like the other day, I was chatting to one of my mates. I didn't say it was right. And he's going, it's terrible there. And I've heard that Tottenham fans are buying tickets in Russia and it's going to be all chaos. And I heard this in the, when CSKA played and I heard that. And I said, have you been to Russia before? No, I haven't been, but how do you know? But I heard, heard from who? But I heard, listen, we'll go and find out for ourselves. Yeah. When we went to Belarus, what did we hear? We mm. heard loads of this and that. Was Belarus not a beautiful city? I don't know, I didn't see much of it. Well, yeah, that's what, you, you were travelling on around Eastern Europe, right? <laughs> um, when we went to Serbia, wasn't that... That, yeah, was a, that, was that was a great trip, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. all right, there was a lot of police around yeah. at the end of the game. I've never seen as many police as that in my you, whole you life. You know the maddest thing, And man. there were soldiers and yeah. everything. When we were right. walking up that mud track towards the stadium, <laughs> and on the left-hand side, they had like this derelict building, oh, yeah. which was all graffitied, and it looked like something off Call of Duty. And then, and then, <laughs> and then when you looked right at the very top of it, you could just see these little heads with guns. Snipers just snipers, there. man. And I was like, oh my God, we're in Call of Duty or something. It was like, But yeah. you were safe, really. No but one... It was... It was we, you know what? In, and do you know what? That's possibly one of my best ever European trips in Serbia terms of Serbia was atmosphere. nice. And before I went to there, every person that I spoke to was telling me not to go. Robbie, you as a black guy, you're mad going to Serbia. We've got a police escort right? around the town, don't we? 
<laughs> I, you said that. I didn't see that, right? But you know what? I found the people very friendly. Yeah, they were nice. And this is the thing, is that, as I said, right, people are giving you advice. They've never been there. Mm. People are telling me about Russia, and they ain't even... Be, but Russian people are getting in contact with me and saying, yeah. Robbie, come and see for Don't yourself. Don't know till you try. You know what I mean? Come and, you know and, what and, and some of these people that have reached out to me, even from Russia, are people that are from England who live in Russia and say, yeah, listen, no worse than England. Yeah. Right? No, it was just the same as in England. The, you, get, you know. The example you said about Serbia was the fact that um, we spoke to Vuj. Yeah. Who's Serbian. And he turned around and said... He took, Vuj told me from time. He said, Vuj just said to me, Serbia is a beautiful country. And he was right. Yeah. Listen, every, listen I, I'm not going to be naive to say that there's not issues. We've seen what happened between the Russian fans and England fans in, in the World Cup. We've seen incidents of racism in Russia... Um, which is disgusting that I've seen um, before. But, you know, I want to go there for myself and find out what the play... I'll, I'll tell you when I've been there. When I've been yeah. there and come back, I'll probably be battered up. I'm <laughs> sorry, right? But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it's like, right? You know, there's, a load, go... of, there's a load of Russians in the woods right now just preparing <laughs> for you. <laughs> Ask no fan TV! Ask no fan TV! Just practicing, you know what? punching I, the I, shit I, out I, of woods. I, I said to somebody, though, right? I said to somebody, do you know what? If that's how the hooliganism thing works out there, I rate it. Because you know what, sometimes I wish then we'd do that over here. Because sometimes yeah, I go to matches and there's people giving it all this mouth. Yeah, go. And I think to myself, you know what, maybe they should bring that Russian system over here. Everybody who wants to fight, take them to a little forest. So you know you go to a game and there'll be people, yeah, DT, you are. Right? You say to them, all right, forest, you know, yeah, forest for you, forest for you. Right? And we say, right, we're all going to meet up at the forest um, on the next, you know, before the game. Yeah, we've had a lot of grief. We look, I'll tell you, from what I know, when that day comes, mate, there'll probably be one or two people there. Because when the reality starts to hit them, that actually, I'm going to have to go to the forest and face up man on man with this guy. There's no talking. No keyboard. There's nobody to help me. <laughs> We're going to have it out. You know, like a bit like, that's why I rate the gypsy guys. Yeah. When they go, fear of right. Right? <laughs> that is the worst! <laughs> oh, no, that was a, sorry, sorry. That was the worst gypsy <laughs> accent. <laughs> and I, I've, got some, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got some mates who are gypsies, they're probably going to knock me out now. For you that. know what? They're going to be like, Robbie, listen, what was that? But listen, I rate, the the, I rate those gypsies. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I rate the, them you know the one you know who's going to cuss you is my son. <laughs> <laughs> I rate those gypsies because they'll be like, man on man. We'll argue that we'll, you know, let's go and we'll go face to face and we'll have it out and whoever's standing after. And then they're even, the guy gets dropped, they'll lift him up and say, right, mm. we've settled it now. And we, if they had that, if they bought in that forest thing, like what I see in Russia over here, I reckon there'd be hardly anyone turning up to that. Because mm. there's a lot of noise over here sometimes. Mm. So, you know, maybe that's a better system of settling it out than it is, you know. But we just don't want none of that, obviously, at the grounds. Yeah. You know, and I'm hoping that, you do know, your, um, two your... things. I'm hoping that Arsenal sort out this visa thing. Yeah. And also, I personally, the more I'm thinking about it, I'm looking forward to going to Russia. Yeah. Do you, I really, do you... and I'm going to be going over to, do your to Russia for the World Cup. I'm not doing the accident. Do it, no, You'll be watching too much Snatch. I'm going to have some... <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, I'll the I'll blue. <laughs> <laughs> the but, best thing is, and you know the ironic thing as well, right, is that I've just had... Kieran texting me, my son, <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, do you know what? It, no, no, I realised that we ain't doing it live because he was probably cussing the accent, and it's just like, but yeah, yeah that, apologies that, for that accent. It was that, terrible. That was the worst. Yeah, what I suggest you do is, is go home, get a copy of Snatch, stick that on, and then go and le learn some of the lingo. Well, listen, thanks for watching the show today, um, and uh, don't forget, as usual, you can download the podcast. The links are in the description below. Um, it's the international break still continuing in and uh, then of course when we come back for the podcast next week we have got a game to look forward to it's Stoke <sighs> the chance to relegate Stoke possibly oh lovely <laughs> we'll discuss that next week yeah we'll discuss that safe